Welcome to another edition of Drummer Nation Live, the show for and about drummers where we talk about all things related to drums. I started a series a few months back called Drum Stories, in which I ask a lot of great drummers to relate a story of their choosing, a short story, with no rules whatsoever. Today's show features the premiere of a new one from the great jazz drummer and vibraphonist Chuck Redd. All that and some reflections on the day coming up next on Drummer Nation Live. I absolutely love playing drums and I couldn't imagine uh, not having that in my life and I really uh, if I could fac help facilitate that and have an impact on your life so that you can play drums, that means the world to me. Drummers who prefer dark cymbals with fast responses will love the HH Vanguard series from Sabian. Vanguard provides an elegant, complex sound that is always musical. Each model is fully hand hammered to be thin and light with a flatter profile for a deep fundamental tone and a smaller, musically integrated bell. The result is a clean, woody stick definition with exceptional articulation and responsiveness. Find detailed information at sabian.com slash vanguard. Okay, let's get rolling. Before we play the new uh, drum story from Chuck Red, a couple of cool things to talk about this week. One I really like is that the music business seems to be coming out of its uh, enforced slumber following COVID. Live Nation has announced a busy concert touring schedule this summer. That's a good thing. The clubs in New York, you might check the Blue Note and Birdland. They're all trying to wrestle with this and scramble for new opening series and events. Check them out. Uh, in on the west coast there's yoshi's bay area uh they've got some new announcements uh in new orleans you have preservation hall reopening you have tipitina's that's owned by the band galactic a founding member of which is stanton moore the great funk drummer they have been wrestling with this all along trying to make things work in covid so i'm also hearing from musician friends of mine and drummers, old joke, that gigs are beginning to happen. Guys are traveling again. Clubs are starting up. Events are happening. People are starting to go back to work as drummers. Um, I'm very grateful that my government is taking care of me with some unemployment assistance, but uh, like everybody else, I'd much rather be working. So next, we're going to move on to this great new drum story from Chuck Red. I guess a subtitle for it might be Finding Your Beat. And I guess a great greeting to a fellow drummer may be Find Your Beat and Own It, <laughs> which will serve you as well as live long and prosper. Anyway, Chuck will relate to you a compelling story of how he made that realization on the bandstand. Here's Chuck. I absolutely love playing drums. Whoops, that's not Chuck. Here's Chuck. So this is a story about confidence and self-reliance. Uh, this was about 1987, this goes way back. And I was in my 20s and uh, I received uh, what was about the most thrilling call I could imagine at the time. I got a call from Monty Alexander and he asked me if I could play a couple of concerts with him and Ray Brown and Herb Ellis in Florida uh, a few months after that. And uh, so I said, let me check my calendar. No, I'm kidding. I said, this is, this is amazing. Okay, so yeah, I'd love to. I, I'd been playing along with lots of Oscar Peterson records with Ray Brown. I was already a huge fan of Monty's. Monty was a hero and he was kind of becoming a friend. Uh, he had sat in with, on a gig that I was playing with Charlie Bird prior to this. So it was just a, it was just a huge thing for me. And uh, Ray Brown, of course, was one of the great bass players of all time, one of the greatest musicians in jazz. So um, 
I'd been thinking about this gig and I was just so focused on playing with Ray Brown. I was thinking about this for all those months leading up to the gig. So I fly down to Florida. We did a little rehearsal in the hotel room and I'm playing brushes on a phone book. And Ray is there and Monty's there and Herb is playing. Monty had a little keyboard. We're running through a few things. Then we finally get to the concert hall. And I am just, I, I've just got adrenaline surging through my veins at that point. I'm just, you know, it's just amazing. So we start playing a tune at Soundcheck. And um, Ray was known for being a very, uh, what we call on top bass player, really, really uh, on top of the beat and really surging ahead in his playing. And uh, I had never played with a bass player quite like that before. The personal dynamics in this band are very important at this moment in time. Herb Ellis was like an uncle to me. I had played with this group called The Great Guitars with Herb, Barney Kessel, and Charlie Bird for, at that point, probably for about four or five years and toured all over the world with them and gotten to know them really well. And Herb was a mentor and a, and a friend, and as I mentioned, like an uncle. Herb and Ray, were kind of like brothers because they had been on the road together with Oscar Peterson uh, and recorded a zillion albums together. So they were kind of like brothers. They were even roommates with Oscar. So uh, we're all set up very close. And of course I was just kind of getting to know Monty and he was kind of getting to know me. And it was wonderful that he had the confidence to hire me at that point. Uh, and we're set up kind of like the old Oscar Peterson trio set up or the Nat King Cole set up where the piano is kind of in the front. Uh, the bass, meaning Ray Brown, was kind of at Monty's left hand at the piano and I was right next to Ray Brown within probably a foot or two. My hi-hat was right near the bass. So we're playing a tune. I remember it was I'll Remember April playing right in here and again the adrenaline, the excitement and I'm listening to only Ray Brown and thinking in my little 20 something year old head. I'm with you, Ray. I'm with you, Ray. So the second chorus I noticed is now it's kind of like right in here. And about the third chorus, it had gotten even faster as I'm focused on Ray Brown, but I look over at Monty and he can kind of barely get the notes in. He's kind of squirming to kind of, and Monty has the greatest chops of any piano player you can imagine. So we stop again, it's sound check. Monty moves the piano a little bit. We adjust a few things here and there. Herb Ellis, my uncle kind of, leans back to me because he's right in front of my bass drum. He leans back and he says in a very nonchalant way, he says, because he knows Ray's playing as well as anybody, he says, don't get up there with him. Just play the way you play. So Herb knew that I had some authority in my playing at that point. Of course, I still had a lot to get together. Uh, being that young. I still have a lot to get together, but uh, we're all always learning. But uh, I had a lot of lessons to learn. So basically Herb was saying to assert myself and to play the way I play, listen, you know, listen to everything that's going on. So we start again. I'll remember April. Now I'm listening. I'm listening to the piano player, Monty Alexander, Herb Ellis, and I'm listening to the bass. That's all happening. And, uh, and I'm focused on the big picture. And it occurs to me that it feels like the bass player is pushing a little bit. So I center myself and I put it right where Monty kicked off the tempo. Now I feel the spread of the beat happening. I had never felt this before. Ray is kind of on top and I'm kind of like holding back like you would. Uh, it, it really was a, a very similar sensation to a sailboat when the wind is really blowing and you're just pulling back, you're all moving forward, but you're pulling on that sail just so it doesn't get out of control. And it was the most thrilling ride I had ever had. I could feel the adrenaline. I still get goosebumps when I talk about this. So now it's starting to feel good. And I look at Monty and he is just ripping the piano up, just tearing it up. And I'm thinking, oh, this is how this thing is supposed to feel. Herb is right in the center. I feel like he's kind of my ally with the beat. And Ray is just making the whole thing more exciting than you could possibly imagine. And when that starts happening at that moment, I, I can kind of feel Herb's approval. He leans back at me while we're in the middle of that groove. And he said, that's it, baby. 
fuck him, pointing to Ray Brown. Of course, they love each other. Ray hears that. No response. He's just swinging away. And I'm feeling like I have all the confidence in the world because now I'm bringing something to the table to this, this big thing that we call the groove in this setting. And um, it just got better for the entire weekend. Uh, I just kept thinking that every time I just, I have to bring something to this. I have to, I have to play my role in this, which is to kind of keep centered and uh, let Ray do his thing. And of course, Ray, even though he's on top, He's listening to everything going on. He's listening to me. He's kind of using my confidence and my assertion of where the beat is to make the whole thing happen. And if I'm not bringing anything to the table, it's going to be like a it's going to be like a freight train running running away because the drummer has to bring something to the table. So that was a that was a big lesson in confidence, and uh, I've tried to retain that wherever I go. And uh, it was just an, an amazing situation. We played two nights, and I'll never forget that feeling. Memphis Drum Shop is the world's premier provider of percussion instruments. With six showrooms of gear, MySymbol.com, the Memphis Gong Chamber, and a first-rate repair department, turn to Memphis Drum Shop for all your percussion needs. All right, thank you, Chuck Red, for that great story. A lot of drummers had that key moment of transformation where they attain that spot where they know where their beat is and they own it. If I may reflect upon what Chuck said, I think there are three, three elements to get to that stage because he already had found himself on the bandstand with Monty Alexander and Ray Brown. No small task in your 20s. But the three steps, I think, are listening intensely and intently to whatever genre of music you want to play. File it under, do your homework. Really know the history of your idiom. The second one is to embrace and master the standard pedagogy of the drum set for whatever style you're working on. There's plenty of that. It's widely available. You can do it through teachers. You can find it online. Just keep your eyes and ears open and file that under practice, practice, practice. The third one is on the bandstand. What Chuck talked about. And hopefully as a young player, you'll find yourself on the bandstand with some older, more mature players who will give you a wink or a nod or a pat on the back or some little cryptic comment that sets you right on these things, like what happened to Chuck. But you got to remember he had already mastered those first two before realizing the third. All right. Thanks again to Chuck Red. We'll have a new drum story next week. Before I sign out, I do a few calls to action. Um, one is the begging for dollars thing. Uh, if you go to Patreon, if you go to PayPal, if you go to Venmo and look up Drummer Nation, you'll find the ability to help us out here. I do have some sponsors, but we don't exchange money for that. Uh, more like a favor barter system. Um, and then when you do find us under YouTube, Facebook, any of the podcast portals, um, you know where, the website, uh, it's all over. By the way, there is a YouTube channel. Uh, there's a playlist on my Drummer Nation channel for just these drum stories. It's a cool place to watch all of them. Uh, but when you do find them, like them, subscribe, share, you know all those things you need to do that help me out. Okay, one other reminder is that I am, in fact, a teacher. I have a book out with, contempt, uh, with um, Hudson Digital, Rob Wallace's company, and it's available for your iPad, iPhone, whatever you want to download it to. Or if you'd like drum lessons, I am available. I enjoy teaching, and I have the online thing set up with cameras and lights and mics and all that stuff, and I've had some good success with that. 
So with all that, I'm going to close it up and invite you to join me next week for another Drummer Nation Live and check out the full interview Drummer Nation podcasts. One right now is with uh, Dave DeCenzo. Okay, see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.